Hi again everybody, I'm back again with another speed paint video. This time I'm doing a original print uh, and just really quickly, I'm hopefully going to be going to MCM Birmingham in March this year and I'll let you know if I do actually get accepted in. Right then, let's get on with the drawing. So this spooky dude is going to be part of a series I'm making at the moment, all themed around the occult and things like that, and spooky v themes and vibes and that sort of thing. You'll have seen that I draw the head first and then go on to the body, and I don't know if anyone else does that, but I do the head on one layer, and then I make another layer and sketch the body so that I can move the body around, because usually I misplace them, if I'm honest, I always misplace them. Even though this series is themed around the occult and witchcraft and all of that sort of thing and like monsters, I'm still, I've never really been that person who draws something with a meaning behind it unless it's a very specific thing that I'm doing it for because usually when I draw it's usually it looks cool so I'll leave it like that um, and the, oh, that was the bane of my poor fine art teacher's life. My lecturer was called Will and in college he would stand and he would make us all get up and present our pieces and tell him what it was about and like what it meant and I would always sit there and get up and go this is what I drew um it doesn't mean anything at all and he would sit he would just sigh and look at me and go all right god again really and I'm like well you know I don't really care like what it means as long as it looks good you know like it's not about the meaning because everyone can put their own meaning on it if they really want to. Uh, and he used to sit there and go, all right, move on. So if you're watching this, Will, I'm sorry. And I, I guess you were very happy that I didn't choose to pick fine art when I specialized. And that's not to say that I didn't enjoy doing fine art when I did do it because it was, it was fun. It's just, it's very clearly not my thing. It was very clearly not for me. Because I'm very, like, illustrative and that's what I like to do and that doesn't quite fit with what the, uh, like, the boxes that fine art had to tick to get a good grade. So I decided that maybe it wasn't my thing. But I had a bunch of friends who did fine art and that was hilarious because they would come with, to me with all of these things that they'd created. And they were like, it means this and this and do you like it? And I'd be sat going, I do. I just don't understand at all. <laughs> But I'm very proud of you and I, I love the fact that you've done it. College taught me a bunch of stuff. Mainly, you should always do something for yourself, not for somebody else. Because as soon, like when I had to do fine art, it was, it was very forced and it was very, like, not boring, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed other things. And I had to do photography as well, because we had like two weeks of each specialization and then after those all of them like you tried all of them you then picked one to do for the rest of your course and I ended up doing ceramics and pottery literally because the teacher decided to come up to me and like touch me on the arm and go you should come to ceramics and then she was really shocked when I turned up the next week saying yeah I've specialized in ceramics after saying that I wanted to be an illustrator and I chose ceramics because I was already quite happy with the illustrations that I did and I was quite happy, I was confident in my ability to illustrate, but I'd never done pottery before and I really enjoyed that, that was like one of the best years of my life. Sitting around playing with clay was just so fun and now I do my own sculptures and sell them on my Etsy store so I guess I made the right choice.
<laughs> so this idea came about because I like I like that phrase, you're nothing but skin and bones. I've always thought that skin and bones was a very, well, edgy for one and like interesting way to describe somebody. And I don't know why, because it's, it's very clearly like, oh, you're so skinny, that sort of thing. But I don't know, it just, it feels like more. So I like the idea of drawing a really emaciated sort of hair rabbit person, because usually they're, well, in media, depicted as quite lithe and like streamlined. It's a horrible way to say it, but like streamlined, that sort of thing. So I figured the only per the only creature I could think of that I would like to draw would be a, a rabbit slash hair person looking all skinny and like a sack of skin and bones. Did you guys ever hit that point in your life yet where you've just kind of gone, fuck it? You know what I mean? Like, when I was in school, I was like a mad emo slash weeaboo kid. I was one of those kids. Like, ran like Naruto to the, like, dining area. Yeah, I was that person. Fucking, and I used to be very embarrassed. Like, I went through a phase of getting out of the emo and weeaboo phase and being like, no, My Chemical Romance isn't my favourite band. Oh my god, no, I never like anime. Oh, that's shit. That sort of thing. And now it's like, fuck it, man. Like, I went out yesterday and got an MCR tattoo because they came back and I died when I knew that and now I just draw a bunch of emo slash furry bullshit and I do it all the time and that's like my full-time job now so you just kind of have to <laughs> do what you like and like what you do or whatever I don't know what that saying is but I don't know man just do what you want fuck it like I spent so long being upset with who or what I wanted to do and now I don't give two shits. And I think everybody shouldn't give two shits. Genuinely, I think everybody should just do what the fuck they want as long as you're not being a dick. So I got to the point in this drawn where it was almost finished and I looked at it and went, wow, this is really dark. Like when I print this, am I gonna be able to see like light and dark on this? So for the first time I tried doing lightning lines along the outside of the um, shapes and it looks really cool, I think. I think it looks all right. I don't usually do that because a lot of my shading is very soft and I tend to blend heavily and I don't add very harsh blending lines because I don't know I've always thought that that's what it's supposed to look like and now that I'm doing this it looks more fun like here's like close-up shots of it and it looks way more fun it looks more bouncy and interesting I just I'm pretty proud of this one I like this guy Mr. Skin and Bone Man that's his name now and if you like him hopefully I'll have him available as a print at MCM Birmingham hopefully I will let you know Really quickly before I end this video, I want to say thank you to all of my patrons listed here. Thank you all so much for supporting me and I really, really appreciate you. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, give me a follow on these social medias you see and I'll see you next time.